Welcome back to my channel for another Hasselblad X2D episode. And this is the brand new crop medium format sensor camera from Hasselblad. Dimensions of the sensor are 44 x 33 mm and the resolution is 100 megapixel. With that new camera body, Hasselblad also introduced a new lens design and new lenses. And the first one is mounted here. It's a 38 mm lens f2.5 widest open. And it has this new design where you can lift up the focus ring here to get a distance and depth of field scale for manual focusing. And I think also the design in general with these signs here and engravings looks pretty fancy. I like it a lot. The second lens which came with the new camera body to market is the 55 mm lens, also widest open f2.5. I've shot this lens already. I showed sample images on my channel. So look them up. I'll post the link down below in the info box and don't miss these videos. And there is a third one which not yet came to our studio, which is the 90 mm lens. Has exactly the same design. Is also widest open f2.5 and I'm looking forward to shoot that 90 mm lens. But here is a question a lot of people ask me in the comments and is in my opinion a very natural question. What if I purchase that camera body here, the brand new Hasselblad X2D, and of course, I still want to shoot my former XCD lenses, which don't have this new fancy design, which are not optimized for the new face detection autofocus, which is implemented now here on the X2D and was not there on the X1D Mark II. And how is the performance and image quality? Because these lenses have been very expensive. I want to shoot all of them on my new X2D camera body. And how is this performing? This is exactly what I'm going to explore in this video. Let's kick it off. I have now here my trusted backpack in front of me on the table and I use this backpack when I'm hiking, when I'm traveling, when I'm going to the mountains and I will fill it up with six former XCD lenses and the X2D camera body. But first things first, here on my X2D I have still now one of these new lenses mounted, optimized for face detection in the new X2D camera body. And I want to remind people how speedy autofocus is and how spot on in that new combination if you combine the new lenses with the new camera body. So let's have a look here. So in comparison to what we are used to from, for instance, the X1D Mark II and the former XCD lenses, this is much quicker. This autofocus is not a match, of course, for a Sony sports camera or maybe a Leica SL2, but it is reasonably quick and speedy and it is also very accurate and spot on. And uh, that is something we are not used to from the X1D Mark II and former XCD lenses. So I'm really curious to try out now what happens if I keep that camera body, which has face detection implemented, but Hasselblad is not so clear about whether this is supported on the former XCD lenses. And we have these legacy lenses mounted instead of these fancy new XCD lenses and then to see performance, image quality and what have you. Let's look at one lens here in the studio and at the other lenses then in the field and record it via my action cam. So first of all, I mount here now the XCD 30 millimeter. Hasselblad is easy, red dot needs to be at 12 o'clock. I don't need to check anything on the camera body. I can snap it on and that's it. And now if we look at that, let's go back here. If I try the autofocus now, it's working. It is actually working and it looks to me also as if the performance is increased. Well, here it's hunting. So one thing to check here, and that's important, is that you have the newest firmware on this former XCD lenses, which is already some time old. So I go here into the settings and into general, and then in general, I go to service. And then on service, you see the camera body is still in the most recent firmware. They have not brought an update yet, but on the lens, it's 0.5. 5.4 and that should actually be in 0.6.0. So I'm also going to update all these lenses and uh, that is very important to get the best out of it. This lens here is now updated. So if I go here into the settings and go into service and then in service, I scroll down here. So we see now this is 0.6.0, which is the correct firmware for this former XCD lenses, except for the 45P. The 45P has a different firmware, you can look this up. So don't update this one with version 0.6.0 because it will very likely lead to a non-functioning lens. The next one I wanna check is actually the macro lens here. So it's the 120 millimeter XCD macro lens and I wanna test this one for firmware and then go outside in the garden because I saw a big spider 
in a tree, which I want to just shoot with that lens. So let's mount it. Let's quickly check here on general. Then we go here to service and then we see this is already on the correct firmware. So I can go outside and shoot that spider and later show that image. Let's now quickly pack the backpack. Let me show what lenses I'm going to use because it's getting lower light outside. So very likely we will also catch some low light and night images. So the 45P comes with me. It's mounted here currently on the X2D camera body. It goes in here. And uh, of course is one of my most favorite lenses for street photography on the X1D Mark II, the X1D and now on the X2D. The next one I'm going to pack is the macro lens. Let's see if we can get something nice shot with that lens. It's a very sharp lens, but autofocus is my educated guess will be slowest on the X2D on all of these lenses. Then what a lot of people ask me for is the zoom lens here, 35 to 75 millimeter. That will come with me on tour two. So let's get this inside here. Then what have we here? That's the standard 45 with a slightly wider open aperture than the 45P. That needs to come with me too. So let's fit this in here. And then the last one I want to shoot is one of my most favorite portrait lenses. It's the XCD 80 millimeter. I don't have a model with me today, so we'll use it for landscape, but let's see what we can get out of that lens on the new Hasselblad X2D. Now let's get this closed, let's go to the car and let's start the tour. Let's start with the XCD 120mm, which is a macro lens, and uh, let's have a look first at that spider, which I mentioned before, and that's in the garden outside, and you see that spider perfectly put in scene here, looks really good. Here is another perspective on the spider, again very sharp. So the macro lens works, and in general I can say already right now that all the six legacy XCD lenses I shot with the X2D are fully capable to resolve the 100 megapixel resolution of that new X2D sensor. So on that front, everything is fine. More images here. I found that spider outside. Well, that was a bit of a crop. It's loading here, but it still looks good, crisp and clean. Here, fall season, of course, and you see how shallow the depth of field with that macro lens is. That was shot at an f5.6 and 1 over 125 seconds, ISO 400. You see here the fine structure of that dried up leaf, but here you see it's already getting a bit fuzzy. So the depth of field, even at f5.6, is pretty shallow here. Here another image where you see the structure on the leaf, very good, very well replicated, but a lot of fuzziness in the image, even at f5.6. Then here an image with the 120 millimeter lens widest open, and widest open is f3.5. And if we look at that image here, where the focus is sitting, pinpoint sharp, for instance, here and here, but a lot of fuzziness in the image and blurriness because f3.5 at 120 millimeter on the large size of the X2D sensor creates a very thin, shallow depth of field. Here, another image of a berry. You see here how sharp this is and the 100 megapixel resolution of that new sensor is fully replicated. Something else in the garden, sharpness all over the place, but shallow depth of field. Same story continues here. And then here I was taking a photo of a cat and that cat is very sharp. You see it here on the eye, but as soon as the cat is moving, because there is no focus tracking on the X2D, this will not work. And uh, that is really a shame because that sensor is so nice and so sharp and replicates colors so naturally 
based on Hasselblad's natural color science, but if you have a fast moving subject, you will not be able to capture that with a 120 millimeter macro lens on the X2D because there is no focus tracking and the glass just moves too slowly in the lens and uh, this is really not a combination for sports and action or fast moving animals. Moving on to the next two and last images with the XCD 120 millimeter. You see here on that image how soft the background blurriness is. A very nice background bokeh here and uh, that's shot again at f5.6 and then if I crop into 100% on the face pinpoint sharp. All the structure is visible, all the details. And then here is the last frame I wanted to show that was along the road when I was on tour with the car early evening going into the blue hour to shoot these six different XCD lenses and that was shot here at an ISO of 1600 and if I crop in super sharp you see in the darker areas a little bit of fine grain but it's hardly visible and that concludes actually my report on how it is to shoot the 120 millimeter macro lens on the new X2D sensor. The good side of the story is that the lens is fully capable to resolve the new 100 megapixel resolution on the X2D, but the autofocus is super slow and it was super slow before also on the X1D Mark II. And uh, if you have moving subjects, you need a lot of luck to actually capture the image. So here coming into the blue hour in the evening, we had perfect light, very soft light. It was a bit of a hazy evening. The structure in the background is not super clear, but the light in general is nice. The colors are nice. And uh, I was shooting here in the next couple of frames, the XCD 45P, which is one of my favorite lenses in the Hasselblad X lineup. And the image is really good. The image is really sharp. It is shot at the base ISO of 64, one over 55 seconds at an F 4.5. And uh, it is a really good image. And I like the image quality coming from the 45P on the X2D. Shooting the cows you have seen before now with the 45P lens and cropping in by 100%, this reveals a very, very sharp image. So also here we can already conclude the XCD 45P fully resolves the 100 megapixel resolution of the X2D sensor. And that was shot with an ISO of 400 at f5.6, one over 70 seconds, and I think is a good image and uh, the teamwork between the 45P lens and the X2D camera body is also much better. So here autofocus was much, much quicker. I think it was, you know, subjectively felt quicker than when I shot this lens before on the X1D Mark II. And uh, the image quality is beyond any doubt. It looks really, really good and really well. So I like a lot these images. And here we have another lens we can safely use or continue to use from the former X cameras now on the Hasselblad X2D. Here's the last frame with the 45P. You saw that in the little video clip before. And I liked a lot the structure here in the sky and then this group of trees here. And if you crop in by 100%, you get all the clarity, all the details. Very nice. And then I wanted to shoot the 35 to 75 millimeter standard zoom lens for the Hasselblad X system. And I've shown this lens before and autofocus speed when I brought my intro video to my channel on the Hasselblad X2D. And the autofocus is reasonably speedy on that lens. It works very well with the X2D camera body. I can fully recommend the lens. And here in the background, you see the moon rising, which is nice. And uh, here is another image then. So this one here was at 35 millimeter. This is at 50 millimeter. And uh, let's quickly crop in here, super sharp, ISO 200. This one here is at 75 millimeter. And here you see now also even a little bit of the structure of the moon. As I said, it was a hazy day. So my expectations were low about image quality, but it looks actually reasonably well and really good. And it is also very sharp despite the hazy weather conditions. And that lens is my full recommendation. If you wanna have one lens on the X2D, that is the lens you should go for if you need the flex on focal length. And uh, I've reviewed this lens quite some time back and I think it was a fashion or beauty shooting. And uh, this lens is at every focal length kind of as sharp as a prime lens. And uh, since it also works reasonably well with the X2D in terms of autofocus and speed, it is a full recommendation here. And then I wanted to try for the same scene with the rising moon above the mountains the XCD 80 millimeter lens. And that is also one of my favorite lenses for the Hasselblad X system. I've shot this lens intensely in the past and I think it has something magic in the way the images appear later. And that image is an image I really like. First of all, it's very, very sharp. 
if you look here based on the hazy weather it is a little bit grainy which i also like in this particular case if you look at the moon here nicely captured the structure at you know these 80 millimeters on the Hasselblad X2D sensor. It's an ISO of 200 and an f8.0 this time. And uh, I think the structure in the sky, everything we see in that image is nice. And uh, as I said, if you want a magic lens, the 80 millimeter lens is the lens to go for. If you look for portraits or you know for compression effect landscape photography, and uh, this lens is super, super sharp. And again, is fully capable to resolve the 100 megapixel is absolutely no problem for that lens. Autofocus is also reasonably speedy and uh, I was surprised to see that because there's a lot of heavy glass in that lens but the autofocus worked very well. Here a few variations of the scheme, then here a nice tree in the open field, very very sharp and also in terms of again the color representation coming from Hasselblad's natural color science, really good and uh, if I go on here we have one last image with that lens, now two trees, and I captured here the evening scene. I think you saw that image in the video clip I played before, and uh, we get lots of details here in that image, and we also get a nice representation of a hazy blue hour evening time with the Hasselblad X2D. Moving on to the next lens I wanted to shoot, which is the XCD 30 mm So here we now have a classical true wide angle lens because 30 millimeter on the 44 times 33 millimeter sensor of the X2D from a field of view perspective in full frame equivalent terms corresponds to a 24 millimeter lens on a full frame sensor. So a true wide angle lens. And uh, again, we have a nice image. That image is super sharp. Look at the details you get in that image here. And uh, also here, no problem to deal with 100 megapixel for the XCD 30, absolutely no deal. It just works like a jam and whatever we shoot will be sharp and crisp and autofocus also is reasonably speedy and the teamwork between the XCD 30mm and the Hasselblad X2D works really well. Here another image just to show how this lens is performing. Nice colors, nice detail in the image and again another lens we can continue to use safely on the X2D camera body. And then last but not least here the classical 45mm XCD lens. So the difference between the 45p you saw before and this one here, the 45, is that the 45p widest open is an f4 and this one here, the 45, is widest open an f3.5. For me personally, this difference doesn't move the needle and the 45p is much smaller and uh, also has the same terrific image quality than the standard 45. But it is a lens many people still have in the lens portfolio because it's one of the earlier lenses Hasselblad brought to market for the X camera system. And here we get now all the goodness again in sharpness. Look at that river here, nicely represented in that image and in the scene. Very nice here the other side of the river, same story, very sharp, very crisp. Here also with different lighting of course, an ISO of 400. And then here I should actually have used a tripod because it became really dark and the scene became a low light scene here. But I was lazy and I thought why not testing now the in-body image stabilization of the new X2D. And that was a good opportunity. So this image here is handhold shut f8.0 ISO 400 and 1 over 6 seconds handhold, right? And now if I crop in here by 100%, you get all the details. No fuzziness or blurriness at all and the in-body image stabilization fully worked and gave me some stops. So I was able to shoot handhold without a tripod. A really nice image and pinpoint sharp. So also here the standard 45 millimeter lens performs in terrific ways on the X2D sensor and the in-body image stabilization works as well with all these XCD lenses as it works with the new lenses which Hasselblad brought to market with the new camera body. And then I thought why not pushing the envelope further and instead of 1 over 6 seconds going to 0.3 seconds and that's the result here. So the image is a bit brighter now because I didn't compensate here with aperture or ISO and again no blurriness, super sharp, super crisp. And then I thought, well, if 0.3 seconds works, why not doing this with one second exposure? And then I got this frame here. So this is now a one second exposure, handhold shooting, no tripod at all. And it is still in the same way as the images we saw before, very sharp and very crisp. No blurriness at all, no problems. So you don't need a tripod if you want to go for a one second exposure here, you can just shoot handhold. And that confirms the effectiveness of the in-body image stabilization 
and I like a lot the way this image is coming out here from that little exercise. So besides testing that the XCD lenses work very well on the X2D camera body, I also had here as a side product the effectiveness test on the in-body image stabilization of this new camera from Hasselblad. Here another longer exposure shut hand hold 1 over 8 seconds at f8.0 and ISO 400. And in general my little experiment worked very well. All these lenses very nicely resolve the 100 megapixel of this new Hasselblad X2D sensor. They all perform reasonably well in terms of autofocus. Some of them are a bit more speedy, some of them are a bit more laggy. A disaster in terms of autofocus was the 120 mm macro lens, but macro lenses very often you shoot anyway in manual focusing mode. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy, and of course, peace out.